how to tell if you have skin cancer. May is Melanoma Awareness Month. Now melanoma is one type of skin cancer, but there are many other types. Squamous cell, basal cell, Merkel cell, which is a lot rarer. And as a side note, I have videos going in depth on all of these different types of skin cancers, and they can be found in my skin cancer playlist. You definitely need to check that playlist out because I give a lot of life-saving tips, if I say so myself, with regards to how to check your skin at home, signs of different types of skin cancers. But how can you know if you are dealing with a skin cancer? What are some signs? What are some things that you should be looking out for? In comparison to other types of cancer, the good news with skin cancer is that, well, it's a lot easier to find because, well, you just have to look. Whereas some types of cancer that happen internally, they're hiding in there and there's not a good way to find them early on. With skin cancer, if it's caught early, in many cases, it can be removed and treated and that's it you can go on with your life. However, if a skin cancer diagnosis is delayed, the skin cancer can grow, and as it grows, it can put out little roots, depending on the type of cancer. It can take over a larger area, and in many cases, it can turn into something that is a lot more stubborn to treat, requires a more involved surgery to remove, um, or you know, potentially, depending on the subtype of cancer, it could become more potentially life-threatening, say, for a melanoma. Something you may not realize about skin cancer is that it can happen pretty much anywhere. It can happen, obviously, you know, maybe what comes to mind is sun-exposed skin, because uh, many types of skin cancer are related to cumulative sun damage. Um, but really, you can get a skin cancer in places where the sun doesn't shine, like the bottoms of your feet, the genitals. You can get skin cancer in your scalp, your eyelids, the lips, your ears. So you really have to be very comprehensive when looking out for a skin cancer. Skin cancer also can pop up in your nails, your fingernails, your toenails. I suggest checking your skin at home on a monthly basis. And this is especially helpful if you're someone who has a lot of moles at baseline, but honestly, anyone can benefit from doing this. Now, you want to be a really comprehensive when examining your skin and doing self skin checks. You want to look at every spot. You want to make sure you part your hair and that you're taking a careful look at your scalp. You want to get a mirror and be able to examine your back. You want to be able to examine the backs of your thighs. Check out my video on how to do a skin check at home because I go step by step outlining the process in a streamlined fashion for an efficient total at-home skin check. Better yet, get somebody else to help you out. Two sets of eyes are always better than one. Speaking of which, fun fact, hairdressers are our biggest ally in the skin cancer detection space because they detect many skin cancers in the scalp early on. They bring them to the attention of their client and say, hey, I think you should get that looked at. Skin cancers can happen at any age, but they are more common the older you get. Risk factors for certain types of skin cancers include cumulative sun exposure throughout your lifetime. If you're somebody who tanned a lot, went sunbathing, you got a lot of unprotected sun exposure, that definitely is a risk factor. Also, if you have ever used a tanning bed, that certainly puts you at risk. Being a paler skin type, having multiple moles, having multiple moles that are atypical in appearance, also having um, light eyes, red hair, lots of freckles. Also people who have a weakened immune system, who are immunosuppressed. Say for example, you have had an organ transplant, you have to take medications to suppress your immune system to prevent your body from rejecting your organ transplant. Well, that is an at-risk group for different types of skin cancers. They need more intensive monitoring by a dermatologist. Skin cancers can also happen in areas where you have had a skin injury, such as a chronic wound wound that hasn't healed properly. That is a potential site. Exposure to ionizing radiation is also a risk factor. Um, say, for example, you were treated with ionizing radiation for a cancer, and well, now the skin in that area 
is more at risk for developing skin cancers because the radiation does alter some of how your body surveys for cancer. What does skin cancer look like? Well, it can take on a variety of different appearances. Many things you might be under the impression are just like a pimple or a uh, skin tag could in fact be a skin cancer. But as a general rule of thumb, here are some tips. A worrisome feature is a mole that starts to change in appearance. Now, when it comes to moles that are dark in color, if they start to change appearance, you really want to look at them for the following features because these following features are suspicious for perhaps a melanoma. They're called the A, B, C, D, E's of melanoma. The A stands for asymmetry. If you have a mole that all of a sudden becomes asymmetrical, meaning you draw a line through the center of it and it's not the same on either side, that is potentially concerning. The B stands for borders. There are irregular shaped borders or sort of blurred borders. That would also be worrisome. Color is the C. Having multiple colors or a change in color, all of a sudden an area where it's like very black or there's some redness, that would be worrisome. D stands for diameter. Anything that becomes larger than say the head of a pencil eraser, roughly six millimeters in diameter, that is something that may be worth paying more attention to because potentially it could be signs of an evolving uh, skin cancer. Speaking of evolving, that is what the E stands for. So basically something that has evolved to have these changes and is you know kind of becoming different as time goes on, that is more worrisome. So that's more in line with moles that you have that might be changing or dark spots that may be changing in line with potentially worrisome for melanoma. But another sign outside of the ABCDEs is called the ugly duckling sign. Basically, if you stand back, especially if you're someone who has a lot of moles, you stand back, you look at yourself, and yeah, you've got a lot of moles, but there's just one that looks different. It stands out. And maybe you never noticed it before, um, but it just looks unusual in comparison to your other moles. It's called the ugly duckling sign. But there are also many non-melanoma skin cancers. And truthfully, these are actually a lot more common than melanoma. They become increasingly more common as you get into your older years. They can take on the appearance of a dome-shaped growth, sometimes with an overlying dilated blood vessel. Or maybe you have this rough scaly patch. Or you may have this stubborn sore or ulcer that just does not seem to heal. Speaking of things that don't heal that are worrisome for a skin cancer, if you're an older adult especially, but really anyone, if you get what you think is a pimple and it does not go away, that is suspicious. Pimples, while you can continue to get many pimples, an individual pimple should go away on its own. So that is worrisome. Something that looks like a ward could potentially be a skin cancer, a rough scaly patch, or a area of the skin where it looks almost like a scar or has a waxy appearance. Certain skin cancers can take on the appearance of a pink reddish growth that sort of dips in the center. A sudden appearance of a brown or black streak in the nail is also a worrisome finding that you would want to bring to the attention of your healthcare provider. A skin spot concerning for a skin cancer may have some symptoms associated with it. It can itch, it can bleed, it can have a pins and needles tingling sensation because sometimes little blood vessels course throughout the skin cancer and that's what makes it more prone to bleeding or little nerves are coursing through it and getting trapped and that's what gives that pins and needles sensation or causes pain or itch or discomfort. But by and large, people who develop skin cancers, um, you feel otherwise healthy. That is one of the tricky, sneaky things is that a person who develops a skin cancer for the most part is you know, going about their life healthy as a horse, so to speak, doing everything that they normally do, normal appetite, no fevers, night sweats. You know, it's not like, you know, it's not like you are critically ill or just not feeling yourself or feeling fatigued or unwell. Um, that's not a, a sign of a skin cancer per se. Most people are, are feeling well. Doing skin checks at home can really help you out because you can monitor your moles, your spots, and if something is changing, again, it's important to show it to your dermatologist early because if caught early, the outcomes are much better. How does a dermatologist diagnose skin cancer? Well, they're going to examine your skin. Um, they're going to look at the 
given skin spot of concern with something called a dermatoscope, we can look for certain features. But if it is something that is truly worrisome for a skin cancer, a skin biopsy will be needed. And that sounds really scary. Oh my gosh, a biopsy. A skin biopsy is not as scary as it sounds. It involves just putting a little numbing medicine in the spot and removing the spot. And depending on the size, location, stitching it up, but uh, it's something that is done in your dermatology visit. So when you make an appointment with a dermatologist, they examine your skin. If they find something or the spot that you're worried about, they're worried about too, they can do a biopsy right then and there. So the biopsy is the skin spot that's been taken out. And the biopsy is put into a bottle with preservative in it, and that is sent to a dermatopathologist. So the dermatopathologist takes it, and their lab technicians process it into um, slices, and they look at the tissue under the microscope, and they look for cancer cells. And if they find them, they put that in their report. Um, they also comment on on the extent and, and things of that nature. They may, in some cases, take the biopsy and do some special laboratory tests on it, special stains, markers for cancers. Once all that information is comes together in a biopsy report, then the dermatologist can go from there. In a lot of cases, the biopsy is the treatment, is the cure. They got it all out with the biopsy. That's, you know, especially if, if caught early, sometimes that, that's the outcome. In other cases, more treatment would be needed, such as a done another surgery to make sure to get it all out. And in some cases, depending on the location, the size, the type of uh, skin cancer, you may need to have a special type of skin, ca skin cancer surgery um, called Mohs surgery. Mohs surgery basically is a surgical approach to removing um, skin cancers where you take little pieces, piece by piece, to make sure you get all of the cancer out but at the same time, because you're going in this step-by-step -step fashion and you're examining the tissue under the microscope at the time of removing it, the, the, the surgeon is actually taking, taking the skin cancer out piece by piece and taking it over the microscope and looking at it and saying, did we get it all? No, all right, let's go back and take some more. All right, did we get it all? All right, no, let's go back and take some more. Oh, we got it all. So that's how Mohs surgery works. And the reason that it's so helpful is it has the highest cure rate for different skin cancers and it's tissue sparing, meaning they have removed the least amount of skin from you possible to ensure getting all of the cancer out. And when we're talking about areas on your face, you can imagine that that's really important because there's not a whole lot of wiggle room. Speaking of which, in some cases, your um, dermatologist, uh, Mohs surgeon will need to do a special type of repair to cover the area that they have cut out. So that might involve a flap or or a graft or something of that sort. All of that is a bit above and beyond the scope of today's video. All right, guys, so those are some general pointers on how to tell if you have a skin cancer. In the description box, I will link um, some websites where you can look at images. The reason I don't include them in this video is that they are a bit graphic in nature and YouTube will um, remove the video if I include them. So I will put them in the description box. They are publicly available, so you can go and look at them there. Also, check out my skin cancer playlist where you can learn all about basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma. You can learn about melanoma. You can learn how to do an at-home skin check. You can also learn about how to prevent skin cancer, and you can learn about how to get ready for your first dermatologist appointment. So I have a lot of videos in there that I think will be helpful to you all and are relevant to bring up in this month of melanoma awareness. All right, guys, I hope this video was helpful to you. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.